Good morning and welcome to Daily Devotions with Pastor Joe. I'm Pastor Joe and for this morning's devotional we're looking into the book of Ruth back at chapter 3 verses 6 through uh, 18. 6 through 18. And at the start of this video I'd just like to encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with a friend if you haven't done so already. Ruth chapter 3 verse 6 says, uh, and this comes right after we had just talked about Ruth and Naomi plotting uh, what Ruth ought to do in order to get Boaz to marry her so that they could perform the part of the kinsman to uh, birth a child to raise up in the name of the fallen husband who had no children to carry his name. Now, uh, Ruth chapter 3 verse 6 says, And she went down unto the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And right here we see a very encouraging thing. She was taking the advice of somebody who knew the way she ought to go, who knew what she ought to live by, who knew uh, uh, the right advice to give her. Now, that doesn't mean everybody who gives you advice is somebody you ought to listen to, but when you listen to somebody who is a godly person, who has been close to the Lord, and who knows what, how things work, sometimes it's a very good thing to try and just put your trust in that person and say, you know, yeah, I'm going to put my trust here, and I'm going to do according to all that they've told me not just pick and choose what I want. And on top of that, when you listen to the preacher talk out of God's Word and, and give you advice out of God's Word directly, not saying their own advice of their own thoughts and wishes, when they give you God's Word, it's not a smorgasbord where you can pick and choose what you want. You need to listen to all the advice of God's Word. Anyway, she did all according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. Verse 7, And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, Yes, and it means what you think it means. He went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn, and she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself. And behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near, a near kinsman. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. Verse 11, And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman, howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning, that if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of a kinsman to thee, as the Lord liveth, lie down until the morning. And she lay at his feet until the morning, and she arose up before one could know another, and he said, Let it not be known that a woman came into the floor. Also he said, Bring the veil that thou hast upon thee, and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley, and laid it on her, and she went into the city. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Who art thou, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, The six measures of barley gave he me, for he said to me, Go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Then said she, Sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall, for the man will not be in rest until he have finished the thing this day. And this is a very interesting but a very beautiful passage of Scripture, talking about uh, the a very interesting courtship, a very interesting proposal uh, for marriage. She comes to him, she uncovers his feet as the custom goes, and lays at his feet until he awakes from his feet being cold. Really, he got afraid. He was afraid somebody was messing with him. And he was shocked out of his uh, somewhat drunken sleep and gets up and says, Who are you? She says, I am Ruth, your hands made. Your, your, uh, spread your skirt over me. Spread your, uh, your, your clothes over me. Uh, <laughs> and he says in verse 10, Blessed be thou of the Lord, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning. Or in other words, he's saying you're being more kind to me than I was to you. Because he was giving her food, giving her the opportunity to make uh, food, to bring food home to Naomi. But her, she could have just chased on after any of the young men that were out in the field. 
But no, she comes after this a little bit older man because she knows he's a man who cares about her and is going to take care of her. And she cares more about that than about the youth, attractiveness, and strength of the other young men. And so she, he says, fear not, I will do everything that needs to be done for you. The city knows that you're an excellent woman, and I've heard great stories about you. I've heard great things about you. And that's one thing, uh, young men, young women, both, we need to be very careful that the people around us know that we are virtuous, that we are good people. If they know that we are good people, when they start talking to other people about us, just like with Ruth, they're going to be telling good stories, and that's what we want to have, have told. Uh, and then he says, you know, yes, I am a near kinsman, but there's one closer. And that puts a big wrench in the plans here of Ruth and Naomi because the, the uh, custom was that the nearest kinsman, so if I were to pass without any children, my brother would be the next kinsman. Outside of that, maybe a cousin, and from there up to an uncle. And so it would be further out. So this would be somewhat like, oh, uh, maybe he was a second cousin, third cousin, and the other person was a first cousin, rather, that was a little closer in, in kinship. Not quite, but, but possibly that close. So being closer in kinship, he had the right to take that place if he wanted to. And so Boaz said, I'm not going to be sneaky about it. I'm going to tell him and ask him what he wants to do. And if he takes it up, okay, good. But if not, I will make sure that you're taken care of. And so he says, I'll do my job if it's, if it's permitted to me. But if he takes it instead, then it's his job. It's his place, and he'll have to do it. Then he sends her home, and he doesn't send her home empty-handed. He says, give me your veil, and fills it with six measures of barley, a measure being about a day's wages worth, I think it was. It's, it's, a, lot, it's a large amount of uh, barley that was given to her. I wonder if there's any commentaries on that. Uh, six measures. The quantity of this barley is uncertain, says Treasury Scripture Knowledge. Uh, renders it contained about two and a half gallon, two gallons and a half. So, wow, that'd be that'd be too low, too much. That would have been an awful lot. But anyway, they they estimate that it was somewhere around 18 gallons worth of barley, which would be kind of crazy. But it could have been as much as that. So, a lot of barley sends her home, and Naomi is just ecstatic to see her home and says, "Who are you? You know, are you are you still the same, or are you married now? <laughs> you know, and and isn't that just like a, a mother or a mother-in-law to just kind of nudge, nudge, you know, kind of things? Uh, hey, when are you guys getting married, kind of thing? But she said, then she says at the end of it, sit still, my daughter, or in other words, just relax, take it easy. This man is not going to rest until this thing is done today. You'll find out by the end of the day how the matter lies. And it's just great. There's faithfulness all around. That's one of the things that is the most promising and preeminent in all of the story of Ruth is just the faithfulness. The faithfulness of Naomi to go with her husband and her sons to that land. The faithfulness of Naomi to return to the land of God's people. The faithfulness that of Ruth to follow her mother-in-law when she didn't have to and could have just proceeded on with a much more uh, perhaps pleasant life with a younger spouse back home. Uh, the faithfulness of Ruth to follow her mother's ins mother-in-law's instructions, the faithfulness of Boaz to take care of those who were poor when he was blessed so much by God, the faithfulness of Boaz to do the work that he said he would do, to do the thing he said he would do. And so over and over again, faithfulness is one of the key stories, the key parts of components of the story of Ruth and Naomi's life. So I believe by this point in time, Naomi's beginning to, say, to second guess that idea of calling herself Mara or bitter because she's starting to get some excitement and hope back in her again. So anyway, it's been a great devotional. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, give me a like, thumbs up, share this video with a friend, you know, comment down below what you think. And uh, I'll see you guys again tomorrow on another daily devotion with Pastor Joe. God bless, and I hope you have a great day in the Lord.